right, so today's a bit of a big day. It's the day I've been waiting for. Payday is tomorrow, so we're gonna get some new rubber on the Springer here. So went ahead and got it uh, up on the lift a little bit. I am gonna secure it, so don't freak out. But also got some of the tools that I was gonna need, and it actually turns out that it seems like the Springer is gonna be easier to get the wheels off of than what the street glide was. I don't need quite as big a socket. Say everything seems to be fairly the same size over here. Like, you know, this nut and the one on the other side is a 15 sixteenths. Uh, same on the back, 15 sixteenths. Granted, on this side, I've got a bit of a uh, cotter pin going through a castle nut. But, you know, and then for the front side here to pull our brake caliper. We just need a 5 16 Allen for here and here. And I think we're going to be good. I don't know what size we're going to need for uh, to loosen the, the belt on the rear end, but I'll figure that out. So I'm going to get to wrench in. I'll show a little bit on, on the front here. Probably not so much on the back because it's not a really a whole lot different than what we did on the street glide. Uh, and I, and when I get the new tires on, I'll show you a bit of the install in the front because again, the rear is going to be the same as it was on the street glide and I'll borrow my buddy's, uh, belt tensioner gauge so I can figure out, uh, if that's tight or not. I've got my service manual. I did download that so I can make sure that the deflection is what it needs to be. I think there's the street glide was like a quarter inch over, uh, five pounds or something like that. I don't remember exactly, but again, I've got it all written down. Uh, I am gonna get the torque specs. I haven't pulled those yet, uh, but obviously I'll need those tomorrow when I put everything back on, but everything will get torqued. So I'm going to get you guys set up uh, once I'm actually ready to pull the tire out. So sit tight. All right, so that was a bit of a bear. So apparently I don't have a 15 16 and a half inch drive, so I had to go get out the old uh, breaker bar to get that bad boy out of there. So we do have a spacer here and there are like, little lines in there. I don't know if the orientation of this matters, but I know that the wheel lines up now, so that's the way it's gonna go back in. So I'm gonna watch that. It's not looking like I'm seeing any spacers over here other than the, uh, the caliper bracket. Caliper is bagged and set aside. I might have to get brake pads for it too after looking at those things. So I'll figure that out. But it's looking like this is our only spacer. We might have a washer here. I can't tell if that's a part of the bracket. So got the handy mallet. Gonna give it a few smacks. That was easier than I thought. And it looks like we had an extra washer over here that was just chilling right there that I didn't see. So we'll set that down. We'll keep pulling this out. I'm gonna need two hands and everything's just gonna get rebuilt back on this axle as it came out. So that way I don't lose anything. So hold up. Okay, so you can see axle is out. I did wipe it down. It had a fair amount of uh, lube on it, which I was really surprised by, but it's all put together. Obviously it's gonna go back in the bike this direction with the spacer there. So I'm just gonna set that aside. Don't worry, I'll wipe that down again. As it is, I gotta go through these threads with a little wire brush just to kind of clean them up a little bit. They're gummy. So, come over here. Here she is, she's off the bike, and I finally found the date code. 2112, so the 21st week of 2012. Y'all, these tires, at least the front, is 14 years old if I did my math right. Holy crap, no wonder these things are like freaking rocks. So, uh, I still don't know if I'm going to clean these up before I take them into the shop or if I'm gonna do it afterwards, we'll see. This I thought was a wheel weight, but it seems stuck. So, if anybody knows what the hell these things are, I got one front, obviously, and I think one in the rear. I thought they were wheel weights, but I don't think so but maybe they are. So if you guys, if any of you are smarter than me, which most of you probably are, let me know down in the comments, what the hell is that thing? So, but, all right, flip that over. 
everything here looks good and I don't feel any major ridges front or rear I don't feel any deep grooves so I think the rotor is in good shape I don't have any micrometers to actually measure it but I'm just I'm gonna run it because I haven't noticed anything yet riding it but it's like I said probably gonna need to do some uh, new brake pads and they are still Harley wheels so at least I know they're not original to the bike um, but they're probably only the second set of tires this bike has ever seen which is a little scary that I've been riding on it like this so gonna get back over and get that rear tire off not really gonna show all that because we did it here so wash rinse and repeat there all right so that rear wheel straight up yeah that's what I think I don't know what the hell they used on that rear axle but damn so and for those interested I didn't know this everybody else probably did you got to take that belt guard off this uh, chrome belt guard so you can slip the belt off the pulley and honestly you probably need to you should probably pull this too but I wasn't gonna bother I made it work so that's off um, the front pads actually look fairly decent I got to look at them a little closer but these back pads oh buddy these back pads I don't know if this is gonna come through or not but you know damn so definitely throwing at least back pads on there the fronts God, the fronts are probably still like 80% good. So those got done fairly recently. But wheels and tires are off. New tires are in the truck. Old tires are in the truck. Now, what I'm going to do is rework my straps here. Because these bars got to come back off. I'm going to pop these risers out of here. Take those in when I take the tires in. So they can drop a helicoil in that riser. Get that fixed up for me. So I'm going to get to undoing everything that I've already done. And... Get the tank cover as soon as we lay the bars over. And this is going to sit in pieces like this for a little bit. And I mean, it shouldn't be for long. So I'm going to get to wrenching on that. And the next time you see it, should have a rear tire on. I'll hold off on the front until I got you guys with me. And hopefully I'll have the bars on. So we'll see what happens. All right. She's back together. I'm sorry. Uh, buddy was here having some drinks turning wrenches and it's it's done so to re kind of recap what we did here got the new tire on and I did go ahead and replace the rear brake pads because they were done so I picked those up got everything on got the the belt tensioned up it's uh, 5 16 to 3 8 over 10 pounds with a little specialty tool that you can buy so got that set, made sure that this rear tire was centered, you know, left to right. So I did that by pulling a number off of the swing arm nut center to the center of the axle on both sides. For me, it worked out to, I think, 16 and three quarter inches. So once they matched, I knew this, this tire was centered and it wasn't canted one way or the other. So and then torqued that down to the, the axle nut to 63 foot pounds. It calls for 60 to 65. So then obviously we got the bars back on there, got the helicoils in the, the risers and torqued those down to about 170 inch pounds. Okay. Inch pounds. It can go up to 180, but I decided let's give it a whirl at 170 because what I did is I took some of that, I already put it away, but uh, you use it for like suspending HVAC or plumbing to the ceiling. Um, I know it as plumber's tape, uh, which is different than Teflon tape in, in my mind, but uh, it's about an inch wide or so. You can get it in 25, 10, whatever length spools, and it's got a bunch of holes punched in it. So it's like a hanger tape or something. So that's what I used. And I just wrapped it around the bar once till it met, but did not overlap. Put the cap on top, torqued it, and these bars ain't going nowhere like they did before. Had I purchased Springer bars and I didn't have these this exposed knurling and all the knurling was centered, it wouldn't have been an issue. I wouldn't have had to use 
that plumber's tape, but the bars were free, so I figured what the hell, I'll give it a whirl. For a $5 investment on the plumber's tape, It I think it's gonna work just fine. So, front tire's on, that axle nut was the same, 63 foot-pounds, uh, and I had to pull this bolt and this bolt to pull the caliper off. I don't know the torque specs on there, I just, you know, snugged it up because I was worried about snapping the bolts. So I did give it a little bit of Loctite, so it's not going anywhere. But uh, it's it's much more better. And like I said, these are the, uh, I already forgot what they're called. <laughs> uh, the uh, Cruise Tex. They're, ooh, Springer farted. It's what I've got on the Street Glide. So I'm gonna enjoy them on here, I'm sure. But those old tires, like I said, they were 12 years old. They had to go. So I think, and don't quote me on this, aside from aligning that headlight, the Springer's done. I know I'm, I, I already have to take that back. New air cleaner, new seat, minimum. I think once those two are on, Springer's done. We'll see. And let me, let me know what you guys think down below. I did pull the heat shields off. And I really like how all that looks. You know, the golds, the blues, the purples. I think we're gonna run it like that. So, and then I'm gonna put it out to all of you out there. I wanna vote. Crash bar, or sorry, not crash bar, beer rack. Keep it, leave it. I'm, I'm really 50-50. I like the functionality of it, but I'm not running a sissy bar. So it's really non-functional at this point. It's purely decorative. But I also like how it looks without the beer rack. So let me know. And I'll tell you what, most votes wins. If you guys say keep it, I'll keep it. If you say get rid of it, I'll get rid of it and hang it on the wall, mind you. Hang it on the wall. I'm not selling it. So pretty sure we're gonna go with the saddleman. I just gotta save up some more money because that's gonna be about 300 bucks. I think I'm gonna do the, the dark green stitch to kind of go with the paint. So. At this point, about all that's left now is to get it out in some sunshine on a clear day, which is kind of rare right now, and fire it up. You guys have yet to hear the bike run. So that's the next thing on the agenda once I get a nice day. So that's it. You know, Fat Boy might be going away. Street Glide's not going anywhere. And I'm pretty sure the Springer ain't going nowhere. So. Questions, comments, concerns, as usual, drop them down below. I always get back to you. Uh, if you would, if you're enjoying this, you know, go ahead and give me a like, hit me with a subscribe. Super helpful. And all of you 176 at time of filming that have already subscribed, you all are freaking amazing. I love each and every one of you in the appropriate ways and maybe some of you in the inappropriate ways, but I'm not gonna tell you which was which. So that's about all I got. Y'all take care and we'll catch you next time. Later.